the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right, how you guys doing? Come on in, let's do it. Uh, put on a kimono if you have one. Maybe grab some ramen noodles and uh, jump in a small little car. You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entry into the minds, souls, the hearts, and lives of people of all the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. I am your sensei. My name is Colt Cabana. I am a man with a friend next to me. I'm a man who's eaten... Uh, street oranges, regular oranges, I have strawberries in my room, I have clothes all over the place, I'm a messy man, I'm just a messy, baby, Japanese, English man in a place where I don't belong. Most importantly though, I am a professional wrestler, I am not sitting here live in the studio. No man, we're in like this really tiny hotel room, but it's cool because that means we're in Japan. Apartment in <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> Chris, hey, Chris set it up correct. That's yeah. exactly where we are. And the two of us fitting both onto your bed <laughs> with very little leg room. It's awesome. It's a great visual. Barely. Maybe we'll get some kind of Instagram uh, on there and you can see on either <laughs> at the Chris here on Instagram or Cold Command on Instagram. Hey, yeah, Chris. Hey, what's up? Uh, before we go any further, mm-hmm. this fan, this uh, this podcast is a fan supported and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. Like me, you, you can just like it. me, just yeah. like you. I support this podcast. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I give it to you guys free of charge. I give it to you free of charge every single Thursday, coltcommander.com, mm-hmm. iTunes, Stitcher. Hey, when if you ever listen, which I know you've told me you have, how do mm-hmm. you listen to it? Uh, I go through iTunes. You go through iTunes? I go through on iTunes. On the phone or on the computer? On my phone. On, on my phone. phone. And then uh, I do have a, a file in my uh, on my laptop that has some past episodes that I've downloaded. Uh, Just to keep it on there. Yeah, to keep to keep it on there that you know the ones that I want to listen to that I haven't had a chance to yet, and I'll throw them on a on an MP3 player or something like that. Well, that's great. That's what I got. And also, so here are the ways that you can support: rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend. Let somebody know. Tell them that you that you put them in a file on your computer and you save them to MP3s later. <laughs> Do that. Tell somebody via social media. You've tweeted out when you're on the show. That's great. You're doing you're doing the right thing. Uh, if you got a couple of bucks in your pocket, head on over to coltmerch.com, digitalcolt.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads. Chris and I are actually um, Dave Bogart, the man, the myth, the legend, has uh, helped us with a big in USA Ribera style looking shirt slash jacket. I don't think the jackets are sale for the but the shirts are for sale. Uh, over at myprowrestlingtees.com slash Colt Cabana site is the red one that says Colt Cabana Chica- or that says Cabana Chicago Hero. Um, yeah, I'll get I'll get on that. <laughs> well, I, listen before this comes out, I'll tell I'll tell Ryan to throw it up on a page. Yeah, yeah, we'll get it up there. So that's up there now on your Pro Wrestling Tees, which is what Chris Hero. Oh, that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it'd be weird if it was under something else, like like an under like a really derogatory Frank. name and like. I'm like Ryan. Why is my name under shithead? You know, and he's like, "Oh no, no, that's just the HTML." You know, it's the way we have to do it. ProWrestlingTees.com. <laughs> Head on over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash. Oh God, I don't want to say it. Ass fuck. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had some bad ones that would probably just stay between you and I when a podcast sure, recorded sure. isn't on. Lego. So, uh, good episode today. Uh, like I said, we are here in Japan. Um, and so I thought a cool episode to throw on while we were in Japan is check out who I got. Who got? Actually, the people at home will know, but you won't know. Scott Norton's on the show. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Scott Norton. Hell yeah. Have you uh, ever seen, hung out, been around? Uh, I've never hung out with him, but I did meet him backstage at a Ring of Honor show in San Francisco, and his head is so goddamn big. Well, everything. Yeah, I mean, everything's big, but I just remember seeing his cranium and like, wow, that's like three human craniums. <laughs> he's a big man. Yeah, he's awesome. As uh, here's, a th- here's a thing that I relate to. Well, everyone knows my... Uh, uh, obsession with the movie Over the Top, and we do talk about Over the Top. <laughs> yeah, here is a thing that is known in my world when I want gear, when I'm getting gear. I'm a man who likes to cover up my nipples uh, <laughs> in my singlets, and so what will happen is if I ever get a singlet, or someone makes me a singlet, or I make my own singlet, and uh, I would say, dude, you've Scott Norton this singlet, 
<laughs> nips out because that's just nips just real a wide dip too wide of a v on the uh, chest yeah and just exposure of the nipples yeah i remember there was an episode of like raw where biggie singlet kind of got knocked over and one of his nipples was out and it just looked really it's wrong weird. it, it does. looks so wrong it looks wrong <laughs> it feels wrong especially because i think he just murdered somebody and he's standing over top of them like <sighs> and, it, and there's like a big nip slip going on <laughs> I'll always get a laugh like if I do something. I think I did. I remember I did this in Japan last year because I had some Norton singlets going on. It's like I'll do something awesome, then I'll slowly cover the nipple, and like I want to do it, but it also gets a good laugh. Yeah, (laughs) it's Uh, good. uh, Chris, you're like you're like my official know everything about Japan. Mm -hmm. Um, The Scott Norton, like, does that bring up memories of watching or look or studying or Uh, a couple a couple things with Norton? Uh, Well, one completely off topic before I forget, he used to work out at the same gym with Sal Renaro. And and Sal, Sal and tell <laughs> yeah, stories. Sal would be like, "Yo, he's over there doing incline press. You know, he's doing like six hundred pounds or whatever." But I think uh, Sal, uh, I don't think he really embarrassed himself. But when he finally got up the nerve to speak with Scott Norton, he's like, "Man, you were my favorite character to play on on WCW yeah. NWO versus the World or whatever." Revenge, and yeah. yeah, and and he's like, "Yeah, man, I could fucking knock those assholes out. You know, I just hit him a couple times and knock him out, and then it'd be critical." Yeah. So he he said what would have been like an embarrassing thing, like, "Hey man, you're my favorite video game wrestler." But you know, Norton was like all in. He went. He's with like, it. "Yeah, yeah, of course." Yeah. I, you I know, play, I was, I've, yes, I've beaten up Masachona many yeah, times. For sure, for sure. Ultimo Dragon uh, tries to do the spinning around Rana. I get it, and I wouldn't let him do it. I'd get him in the power box. <laughs> so when I think about Norton, uh, I think about because he did uh, he did some AWA stuff, I believe, which led him into New Japan. I think mm-hmm. uh, I remember him having an awesome tag team with Hercules Hernandez. They were the Jurassic Powers. Yeah, we talk, and, we um, talk about it. We talk dude, about they it. just looked so monstrous, man. Just what a what a cool tag team mixed with like. Vader and Bigelow as a tag team. Like, New Japan really had some good shit back then. And uh, they're not the only... I was going to hope you were going to talk about the the tag team Jurassic mm-hmm. Powers. I'm glad you did, because mm-hmm. that leads into us. Yeah. We're like a tag team now. We're pretty official because we have We're pretty these much the Jurassic Powers we, of 2015. We're the Jurassic World. <laughs> <laughs> we're the remake. We have these jackets. Mm-hmm. Somebody on Twitter posted a picture of uh i think kawada no yeah it was kabashi and masawa kabashi masawa wearing bomber jackets also yeah yep. so i mean basically if you have matching jackets you're a great team pretty much and uh that's what we're doing now so we uh we we came in we had the first match at Corican against the uh the champions who was uh lance archer and harry harry davy boy smith jr yep the killer elite squad the killer <laughs> squad. uh but we beat him we did we, we beat him that was we, a huge we, match we uh we shocked the world uh Corkin was so awesome to us and they they always are i i find as the tours go along uh, some of the country towns, we slowly familiarize ourselves to the fans. But like Cork, and we, it's almost like we pick up right where we left off from last time. And we, I, I've had some good ones there. I know you've had some good ones. We've had some good tag ones there. It's just a really cool atmosphere. And Cork and always brings it. Well, we, you think as a, as a young wrestler, like you go in thinking like you're going to go to Japan and then you're just going to be this monster over person. And then you do your first match there. These are for wrestlers that go to Japan. And then like... Yeah. Nobody really cares because you're just some guy they don't know. And you think like, oh, but I'm foreign. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think (laughs) just there's such a stark contrast between the Gaijin of old with the Hanson and the Brodies and the Andre the Giants and all that that were there nine months out of the year. And then they've seen so many different Gaijin wrestlers since then. So they don't really know who to latch on to. So if it's your first two or three tours, they're just kind of like, well, I don't even know if this guy's going to be around. So I'm going to clap for him and cheer for him, but I'm not really going to fully invest in him. And that's why guys like Devitt and Omega got over so strongly, but Machine Gun, because they were here for so long that people are like, okay, they're one of uh, one of ours. And I think that's the key for so long. And you start. What was your first tour? First, first tour was O four for BJW. Yeah. Your first tour was O uh, five. O five for, for zero, one. zero one. And then I came back with Noah in two thousand seven, and then was sporadic for a while until Claudio and I kind of kicked off, and then you came back for Noah. Mm-hmm. So we've been putting out time, and so I realized, like, oh, I guess I've kind of been here a lot of tours mm-hmm. and a lot of time, and yeah, and so like it kind of kind of pays off. So it was nice. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you know it's. We get to finish the tour at Corkin too, so we get to kind of 
see how that carries over, you know, through the rest of our matches in the Global League. Yeah, and uh, we'll be here. I'll be telling you next week. I'll be telling you all the weeks. I mean, we're going to be here a while. So, uh, Chris, I appreciate you jumping on early. Thank you very much, uh, Banana Man. Sh- sh- <laughs> are you saying that because I have bananas and fruits in my room? Or? Yeah, you are the fruit. Uh, you are a veritable cornucopia of Japanese fruits. Yeah, I don't like to brag. Uh, at, at the at the Chris Hero on Twitter. That's me. Anything, anything else I need to plug before I leave you? No, no, that's good. Okay, I'll s- uh, I'm looking forward to hearing Scott Norton. Yeah. Does he talk about the time in the airplane bathroom? There's a story from Dragon where he was, uh, he had some oh. severe diarrhea, <laughs> and and like he's so massive, like they made him go into the bathroom, but he couldn't shut the door because he's too big. <laughs> Oh man, no! But your but, your well, version of it's on now. Yeah, well, we'll have to we'll we'll find uh, Brian someday to tell that story, or, or or even Scott to tell the story someday, and we'll we'll throw it up as an extra. I I like the way you feel. Yeah, I like the I like <laughs> I like the way you think. I feel the way you like. Song of the Week this week is brought to you by DraftKings.com, the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments. That's instant cash, instant gratification. Why wait until the end of the season to claim victory when you can win huge cash every single day? At DraftKings, it's like a brand new season every time you play for baseball. Just pick two pitchers and eight position players, stay under the salary cap, and you can win a huge payday. Last year, this dude Peter from Colorado won a million bucks at DraftKings in one day just playing fantasy baseball. Hundreds of thousands of fantasy sports fans just like you have already cashed in at DraftKings, and now it's your turn. Turn. Hurry to DraftKings.com now and enter my promo code WRESTLE. Play for free. You could win part of the $300 million in prizes being awarded this season. Use promo code WRESTLE for free entry now at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. All right, because I put an Instagram picture up and everybody says that my tag partner, Chris Hero, looks like Hacksaw Jim Duggan, I'm going to play a song that was passed on to me by the singer of the band itself, Ryan Smith. This is the Randy Savages with Hacksaw Ho. These guys are out of Albany, New York. Check them out on Facebook slash The Randy Savages. Enjoy, and we'll be back with Scott Flash Norton. January 14th, 1954. Born in Glansville, New York with a 2 by 4 American man with the flag in his hand against all evil foreigners. He'll proudly take a stand. Here we go. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hey guys, I want to tell you about a podcast that's helping sponsor this week's show, The Art of Charm. It's a show about truly leveling up in life and relationships and friendships at work, at home, and everywhere in between. It's been a top 50 podcast in iTunes, and some say it's highly addictive. But, you know, in a good way. Topics brought up include how to create confidence, how to get people to like and trust you, how to keep things fresh in relationships, how to create or end a relationship. It's educational, but fun and funny at the same time. They believe personal growth shouldn't be so boring all the time. Art of Charm has studied field-tested psychology principles from special forces, Navy SEALs, and world-class intelligence officers, then reverse-engineered those same strategies and applied them to social life. It's a podcast that brings together entrepreneurs, artists, thinkers, leaders, and all-around interesting people together to discuss relationships, attraction, life hacking, and success. You deserve an extraordinary life. Go to theartofcharmpodcast.com or find The Art of Charm in iTunes or Stitcher start taking your life to the next level so it's very 
conversational. It's like I'm starting right now, and so like okay. as we say it, uh, and so I mean it can be interviewee, but I'd rather just bullshit with you. Let's go for that, for a that, bunch. I, I'm way better this way. Yeah, <laughs> easy, relaxed, yeah. no pressure. I, I have, I mean, I have bullet points in my head if I have anything stuff I want to hit on, like I had told you. Um, but like what I, this podcast, and I'll start with some people that like some guys that maybe I'm not like. We've met a couple times. We'll bullshit on uh, social media, but I'd like to say like you're a friend of a friend, you know. So mm-hmm. hence you're my friend. I assume I have, I have high hopes for you, Scott. <laughs> no, no. Hey man, I'm, believe me, I get along with everybody. Everyone talks so well about you, uh, and I don't. And so I guess I want to go into maybe like talk to me a little bit about. Did you have that same scenario of when you were a little bit younger of guys that were like uh, a little more veteran in their career? Because I'll talk about, you know, we talk about, I can talk about Rocky Romero and Carl Anderson and, and Daniel Bryan, the guys who just were like, Scott was great on trips. What a blast to be uh, in a, in a, in a you locker know, room with. The deal was when I started Russell, I started late. I was 30 years old. I started late after I got done with my arm wrestling career and everything. And it was a struggle getting into it. I was starting at AWA. And you can imagine, just, we all gone through it. Your first match is just absolutely horrifying. You know, I mean, it was something that just was hard for me. So anyways, you know, I'm on the road, the AWA and everything. Baron Von Rasky approached me. We're doing a TV tape where you tape five, six matches in a night. And he watched my match and he said, uh, he says, come on over here, Scott. And I did. And he says... I watched your first match. He says, uh, there's some things you did good, some things you really didn't good. He says, well, concentrate on what you did good. And, uh, you know, he, he talked to me, got me going. And so he started helping me out through the matches. So I did another match that night. And he says, man, that was better, you know. And, I, and so he took a lot of time. But Baron really Rodney, did, a notorious good dude, right? The best. <laughs> but I didn't know Baron. Yeah. He just came up and helped the kid that wasn't a kid. It was a man trying to find his way in this business. And he did that, and it was amazing. Because, I mean, what I went in that night thinking was gonna, I was going to go through was just horrifying. By the end of the night, my fifth match, I mean, it wasn't great, but, I mean, it was a whole hell of a lot better if Barrett didn't come up and help me. So you did your first four matches within one day of a TV taping? I, I did my first match, and then I did five TV tape matches. And it was absolutely horrifying. But if it wouldn't have been for Baron helping me, mm-hmm. and I always said, if I could do something for these anybody else, I would just be the cool. I wanted to be cool with these guys, you know. And I seen the guys you mentioned; they come in. All those dudes when they come in the tour with New Japan, right? Unbelievable. I mean, who wouldn't want to be cool with them? Yeah, just <laughs> best guys out there, man. Because I mean, you. So, because I speak about them like as my generation, right? So it's like obviously you were like a little ladder in your in your career, yeah, dare I say? Of course, yeah, I yeah. Mean, did you feel like? Did you enjoy like the youth of those guys around? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm, I mean, we, would, I did, you know, I hung one of them best I could, you know. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm probably crazy, you know. They probably had a hard time keeping up with me, but yeah, I mean, they're just they're. I mean, I'm, you know, I just had the greatest time with them, and. uh you know, I remember messing with him good. You know, I had my phone with him too. I remember one time it was uh, Rocky and his partner, Ricky, right? Yeah. And uh, Daniel Bryant, they're in the locker room, you know, and this is when I was IWP champ. And they're in the, they're, you know, everybody's got their own separate locker rooms for a change. And it wasn't everybody, but there were small separate locker rooms. And I hear these guys just cutting up having a ball. So I go walk in the locker room. I says, I said, man, what you guys doing? They says, what, what do you mean? I says, you sure are getting comfortable around this place, man. You know, these Japanese people, they take this shit serious. I said, you can't be cutting up. This is business. You know, and I said, you got to get your act together. And I walked out the door. Man, I came back about 10 minutes later, all three of them staring at the floor. Just quiet. <laughs> they're just dead. Yeah. I said, what happened? Somebody died in this yeah. place? And they go, they're just, they raised their head up. They looked at me. And I started laughing. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, so you have fun with them too. But you were around that. Were you around that? I mean, you know that feeling of like, oh no, oh absolutely, right? So were you around the era? I guess early in in the Japanese part. Sure. Right? I mean, when you walk in there, man. I mean, we always called the death the death walk on the on the bus. The first time you're in New Japan, booked on the bus, Americans, we sit you know on the back part of the bus, and I mean, you walk in, it's horrifying because nobody says nothing. It's scary. I mean, yeah. I, obviously, I don't have it to well, your extent. I've, I've, I've I, I tour with uh, Pro Wrestling Noah now, so like 
You, you understand exactly I, what I'm I, talking I, about. I, it's not yeah. different from any other right. company over and, there. And seven tours later, it's like, <coughs> it's nothing. But it's just that first one, right? That, that first, first walk. <laughs> that first time in the locker room. The first time meeting everybody. You know, they, they're sizing you up. They're checking you out. And then, you know, and a, a lot of it is because a lot of guys don't stick. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. just keep, they filter guys in through, you know, but. They're cool. They're, I mean, Japan's awesome. I uh, I was talking with one of um, like the headbangers, and he was saying he did like he got called to do all Japan three months into his career. So like when you say a lot of guys don't stick, it's just like so. I get was there like a weird rotating crew of guys that they would just try out? Yeah, I mean, as far as Americans, sure. I mean, the thing about when I was there, they were using way more Americans. We'd have you know we had our own guy, Gene Bus, with you know the foreign bus and. They were using 18, 16, 18 guys. Right. Well, no, I, I take that back, 10, 12. But, I mean, they'd run guys through there all the time. And, I mean, you'd see guys, three-week tour, you'd make, you know, hey, man, have a friendship, and then you never see them again. <laughs> They're gone. Would I you mean, wonder where these guys came from? Well, you wonder where they came from, and you wonder where they went, right. too. Because <laughs> right? it's, it's over quick, yeah. you know? Right. And then it's pretty wild now that it's, like, back to that, man. The, the New Japan. Like, when I was over there, it was, it was me and Chris Hero, and we went to meet up with the the New Japan guys, and we saw them all get off the bus, and there was like 20, 20 guys in just walking. That's like, awesome. It didn't even hit me until the, then. New Japan's making such a good resurgence. They're awesome. It's it's going really well. Yeah. I mean, the Bull Club's doing awesome. That's a it's. I'm glad to see it. I'm happy. Yeah, it's pretty. It's cool for, uh, I guess, my generation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I I guess uh, getting into wrestling at thirty is pretty interesting to me. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Hawk, Rick Rude, they just said, man, you, as a matter of fact, when they, when they went to Eddie Sharkey's training camp, Hawk basically made me go. I said, man, I'm not really hundred percent in on this. Is that from just lifting uh, in Minnesota? You guys all know, just all the lifters? I went to high school at Hawk. You went to high school? I went to, I, me and Rick Rude met in grade school or, uh, junior high school. Okay. Can you tell me what Rick Rude was like in junior oh, high school? <laughs> well, he, he's still just kind of serious, but I mean, Rick was awesome. Rick, I mean, those are some loyal. How was awesome his junior high school abs, Rick Rude? Probably a lot better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rick, yeah, he, uh, he, you know, he he always worked hard. Yeah. Rick was always in shape. He he was a little bit more in shape than everybody then too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just fit as they come. You know, I don't know if you're, you know, Rick and I did a lot of arm wrestling together over the years. That's how we met. We basically met in junior high school. I was leaving my gym class, which is my last class of the day. And I didn't even remember this until Rick brought it up. On the We're on a private plane with Eric Bischoff, B. Bell, Buff Bagwell, and uh, the Steiners. And he says, you remember when you, you found me hiding behind them wrestling mats in high school? And I said, no. And he says, when you're leaving gym class. I says, oh, yeah. And what was going on... He was hiding from these guys that kick kick his ass. You can swear. And so I said, well, man, I said, you know, if we both go out there, nothing's going to happen. So we walked out of there. They were there. They didn't mess with us, and we just kind of, and now we're buds. Right. So me and Rick, Rick was a hell of an arm wrestler in his own right. We used to arm wrestle everybody for the school lunch tickets, <laughs> ice cream sandwiches. You had a racket going on. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you know, we just started there, and we started arm wrestling there. And then when we went to high school, he went to a different high school than I did. I, I stayed in Minneapolis, and he moved into Robinsville, where that's where he met up with Kurt. So he and I were actually friends before I was friends with Hawk. But, I mean, back then, you know, I mean, I was a bigger, stronger guy. It just make him... Furious when I, you know, because I, I was a better arm wrestler than he was. Yeah, um, was your shape like? Were you always? I mean, you have this like kind of notorious Scott Norton shape, if you will. I've, your body I've shape. I've always been a big guy. Yeah, uh, I mean, I. Did you did you start out like like hefty and sh and mo and shape it like into what it oh, became? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I was a young kid, you know, I mean, I started swinging the sledgehammer with my old man's concrete crew, kind of turned me away. Turn it around for me. What kind? Well, that's it. What kind of? Um, I, I guess grew, child. What kind of childhood uh, did oh, you have? Awesome. I mean, you know, middle class family. You know, two brothers, sister. Dad had a concrete crew in, within the Minneapolis North Side of Minneapolis. We all. Which means? Working. Which means what? He. He was. He did. 
concrete work in residential. And we worked for, we did jobs within the city of what I grew up in. Okay. And, uh, you know, when I was, I think I started working for him when I was like 12. Yeah. And, you know, it was just awesome. You know, everybody. A hardworking guy. Oh, hardworking, man. Right. Yeah. I mean, tough, gritty old son of a gun, man. Right. Yeah. My old man was, it was awesome dude. And so, like, is that, do you, are your brothers built like you? My younger brother was, is, but my older brother wasn't. He was more tall, more leaner guy. Okay. But you guys had that, like, a real blue collar worker's oh, yeah. I mean, physique. No, think about up there, brother. I mean, it, it's just hard. It, it just was normal. Right. You know, I go back and, like, after I got into in the wrestling business, bought a house, you know, and we decided, I said, well, I'm going to pour some concrete. Man, I, you know, I mean, I'm jacked into business, strong as a freaking horse, and also I started doing this concrete work, and it's wearing my ass out. Different when muscles, I was 12, right? 15 years old, man, I said, you know, we're swinging sledgehammers all freaking day long. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it's just different, yeah. Okay. Where, where did, um, uh, it's like, in my head, you're, you and Rick Root are in an arm wrestling club. Oh, like do, we went to a lot of tournaments together. In junior high? No, once we got out of high school. Uh, once you got out of high school. Yeah. Yeah, where does the love like from from arm wrestling go? And, and I, spoiler alert, by the way, not spoiler. I, Over the top is my favorite movie of all time. Wow, along that with was, Cliff Compton. That was, the, the, that was awesome. So that's why, like, there's a little. I'm like enamored by the idea that a, uh, you know, you were in it, right? And that that's your culture that you lived for probably that, so long. That, that movie did more for me. That you know, it wasn't the movie; it was the tournament. Because the movie, I've been there for three seconds, but right. it was. It, it it did more for me as far as my arm wrestling career leading into pro wrestling because if it wasn't for that the other one wouldn't happen. So did did and I hate to bounce around because I do want to go back to like the the childhood of arm wrestling, sure, but like sure. um, so did that did that like spark an arm wrestling revolution that movie or anything? Oh no, okay. See, the thing about it was is actually was kind of a not a letdown, but it was supposed to really pick it up from there on because that was the biggest tournament of all time at the, till that point. The one that you won. The one I won, yeah. Right. And to I'm be in sure. the movie? Pardon me? Was it to be in the movie? No. It, it, to win it? We, no. They already had the movie cast. Is that what you're asking? Well, the, was it the winner of the arm wrestling competition got to be in the movie and that was yeah. the slot? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, the, that was all right. See, I, got, I had a pretty good part in the movie, yeah. but I couldn't act. Okay, and still, you know, Stallone, Glowline Globus went nuts. He said, "Get that son of a bitch out here!" Oh he no! Said, oh yeah. Were and, you supposed to be one of the eight? Uh no, but I was one of the guys that they're trying to to work into because I won the tournament. I beat Cleve Dean, who's this gigantic monster dude, and people went nuts because I was, you know, big dude. I was three sixty back then, three fifty, and you know, I just blew through it like uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I just tore it apart. So, anyways. What happened with the movie, as far as my wrestling career, is Stallone really liked me. He thought I was a pretty cool guy, but I couldn't act. And so when I won the tournament, when the, the movie was premiered in all these different countries, I would go there. And they had me in a tuxedo with the sleeves cut out, <laughs> kind of like this big goon world pro wrestler kind of... Real 80s, I like to think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyways, when I was in Japan, a, a personnel from the New Japan pro approached me and says, Hey, Scott... You really need to give this pro wrestling a crack. New Japan pro wrestling. I said, well, oh, God. You know, I mean, Hawk's been getting on me forever. Kurt, Rick Rude. They said, you got to do this guy. You know, I was big man, strong. You know, and I, a very good athlete. So I always thought, you know, we were texting back and forth. We didn't have cell phones or anything. You know, it took me about two weeks to get a hold of Hawk. So I get back to States after I did this tour or this arm wrestling trip in Japan. And I said, this is new paying any good he says that good company he said if you don't take that job you big bass i'll kill you <laughs> so i contacted him back and i you know they i ended up in brad reagan's camp and went along my way and so that brought me to there that the exposure i got from that movie in japan is what what had put you off from uh wrestling was it just the success of the arm wrestling no i i just i think i was just kind of uh I just didn't have confidence in myself to do it. And just, you know, and I'm, it worked out perfectly. Because when I was in my 20s, early 20s, I'd probably been out of business three, four years. I mean, hmm. no, I just was, you know, I mean, we were just 
I was crazy. I mean, we were having fun. What was the what was the lack of of confidence? Was it like the same? I don't thing know as if I was acting? just like no, not bad acting. It was <laughs> more shy. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of like I just didn't want to put myself out there on TV. I just I don't know. I just something that I'm I'm glad it worked out the way it worked out. I'm pretty fortunate the way it turned out. Mm. I, I I feel, but uh, it's just something that when I was younger. I mean, I believe me, we watched it. AWA was big in Minneapolis. I mean, I watched it. I loved it. Mm. I just couldn't do it. I just it just didn't feel comfortable doing it. Because because I, I so I started when I was eighteen, turning nineteen, and I was right. always a little upset. Like, man, only if I started at sixteen or seventeen. You see, I say the same things, you know. But there are certain things that. But it sounds like you really don't like. No, I, I don't regret it because I mean, you know, we we had a lot of fun in the business. I mean, in Japan, I mean, we you know they just they tell you to you know party hard, don't break nothing. Right. And we partied hard and didn't break anything. You know what, I mean? <laughs> what about the arm wrestling circuit? Was that nuts? That was awesome. Yeah, it was. It was. It was awesome. I loved it. I mean, I did it for ten years. That's one thing about pro wrestling that I regret is that I wanted to come back to arm wrestling once I got my pro wrestling out of the way. But, the, you know, I've torn both biceps, both triceps, and I've got this serious neck problem. And, this, you know, I mean, it just, I can't. When was your vision of going back to arm wrestling? As soon as I got out of the business. Like right after WCW? Oh, yeah, I mean, it was something that I just wanted to do. I mean, I loved it. Do you follow arm wrestling today? Yeah. Did you watch Pulling John? <laughs> they say John Brzezink's the best, right? Okay. Which is, for those and who don't true. know, is a documentary. John Brzezink's the best arm wrestler of all time. But I'm three and all against Johnny, and he never even had a chance. Oh my God, are these on YouTube or anything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it was. I mean, it's not. Put it this way, he never compromised me even a second. Where I thought that it was a struggle. When I left this, that sport, there were, it was me than everybody else. And I mean, and I left right in my prime, 28 years old. Mm. Those guys, you know, Gary Goodrich, he's, they say, you know, he's one of the greatest super heavyweights of all time. I would flat hand him where I didn't even close my hand on his fit, hit, you know, locking up. I would just hold my hand up like you're doing a high five. Right. And just pop. <laughs> and I just kill him. I mean, and if he's one of the, you know, top 10 all time best heavyweights going and they talk about, you know, he gets a lot of play in there and that everything. Do you think you don't get enough love in the arm wrestling community? My God, no. No, that's that's something I'm, I can oh, feel it. Yeah, I've, they don't. I don't get no. I mean, Johnny, who is amazing. Believe me, I'm not saying anything bad about John Brzee. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's the best because he's when you last that long, do it that well, and beat that many people. You, but I. You'd like to get a little more Johnny. Was I don't pretty, know. I don't Johnny, know the community that well. I mean, he never lasted. <laughs> just about. click I mean I mean and then never stop me is is there an arm wrestling school or did you just kind of like learn on the on the ropes you learn you learn as you go you, because I mean you know if you're fortunate enough to like these guys in LA Virgil Arcero George Hood all these guys they, they would pull on Tuesdays at Virgil's house and then all these guys kind of like it's like a biker bar or something their arm wrestlers come straggling in you know mm -hmm. and then you know then uh Rosencrantz come in or Fisher and all these guys they start working with each other and uh that's how that you know but personally I would have two three guys that I'd pull I would hook up to like resistant weight like a, a cable machine a cable machine yeah <laughs> and then lock up with a guy strap in some you know a couple hundred pounds on there because you know it was Hard training, you know, but I mean, you had different training though for arm wrestling as opposed to weight training. No, nah, what I you're just getting it all big. I was strong. Yeah, I mean, when I when I won the world championship, I took basically a year and a half of arm wrestling. I just concentrated on it. I wasn't going to do it. I was when they I found out about over the top. I says I'm going to win that tournament. Cleve Dean, he's he was killing me. You know, he's 500, 630 pounds, what six hundred ten pounds, big dude. You know, and I mean, he he started he he. Blew me out first time he arm wrestled me. Then the next four or five times I was, you know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds maybe. And then all of a sudden I just went to work. <laughs> and when I left, I didn't go to the world tournament. I didn't go to not, anything. I just went, I didn't arm wrestle. I just says, I'm going to be the strongest guy that's ever arm wrestled. 
and I went nuts in the gym for a year and a half. Wow. And when I went back to in the bit in the arm wrestle, I had to qualify for the over the top tournament. So I went to New York. Swear to God, I didn't pull nobody. I didn't even lock up. And I went out there, and uh, man, it was. I had like eleven matches, and it lasted about five seconds. So <laughs> it was just crazy. And then, like, I knew I was getting so strong that if I just concentrate, you know, your, your arm gets tore up. Right. It was fresh as hell, man. I mean, I, that was the probably that was the key. You think? Oh huh? yeah. Is that I, you? absolutely? I worked my my strength, my grip was just my hand was just. Uh, and so you are the original. I mean, Stallone was you in that movie, essentially. Well, not really me, but no. I mean, but that was the over no, the top. I tell you what, that, that was that was so cool. Yeah. I mean, when I watch, I, I see that movie today. The music, you know, I got to use the winner takes it off. Yeah, ring music. I mean, it's just <laughs> it holds, it holds up for me too. You know, I mean, it it just it was it was it was fun. I mean, you know, but when I left arm wrestling, it would have been. If I'd stayed there three, four more years, you, I mean, you'd have found, you know, Johnny been around. Those guys have been around. Right. But they did. But you've been crushed. But just because Hawk was like, you're, uh, <laughs> he you're, was, you're dead if you don't do it. You, no, you had to jump in, huh? No, but no, it was time. It, you know, it was time to get serious about something and really. What, what was it? Was it was it the idea of a, a longer career? Was it the idea of money? Was it the idea of. Uh, uh, I mean, you know. Something different. I guess I just started getting a little. I just don't it, money, of course, career, yeah, confidence, yeah. It's big, strong dude. Mm. Knew I was by you know athletic enough. I you know I just all things came. You know, always time. I was man. We, I mean, we we're going crazy. Right. I was, I was a madman on the run, brother. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, we had fun. You know right. what I mean? It was just. You were ready to live that lifestyle. I needed, uh, yeah. I didn't realize I was going from one fire, frying pan to another. Right. One. I thought it might slow down a little bit, but that <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> so Rangan strange you. So New Japan directed you to AWA to take they you back to me, New Japan. They they told me they gave me Brad's of you know, and I I've met Brad before and I didn't know him real well, but they said you know this is the challenge you go through and everything, and so I did and. Uh, with the idea of like you would train in America and then they'd scoop you back up and yep, take you there, yep. and uh, Be- because you were on, I mean, right, you were on AWA television. Yeah, that, well, they see that what happened is when I went through Brad's camp, they came, they came to me, they told me Moss Seidel came in, you need to get on TV, whatever you got to do, get on TV. Vern Gagne pulled me out of camp early and put me, on, you know, and then I was doing that stinking flapjack with John Norris. <laughs> stinking. Is, Ah, it's, it's you know, okay. I had to ask oh. you about it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I get more. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, the day that that happened with the 298 flapjacks or whatever, yeah. I said, Johnny, what are we doing in this interview? He said, I don't know, man. We'll just wing it. I'm not kidding. He had no idea he was even. I mean, that just came right. I just, I'm like, are you kidding me? And he wouldn't shut up. <laughs> and I mean, that... Uh, Did that become a, like an ongoing rib with the boys? Maybe oh, like you and pancakes? Or absolutely. What? I mean, it was... That was tough, you know, because I remember I'm in the locker room. Greg Gagne comes up to me. He says, you know, we're the Lumberjacks. and a couple big dudes. And, and you know, I'm still... You know, Ver, Baron helped me along, got me going. And, but I mean, I'm greener and baby shit. He comes in, he says, hey, we want to call you Flapjack Norton. Yukon John and Flapjack Norton. I said, bullshit. <laughs> I ain't doing it. I was so against that. I said, no way. And uh, But also, like, just to put it in, in context, it's like you're like a 30-year-old guy. You're not a kid. Yeah. So you, and I didn't want to be like like uh, some cartoon character guy, you know mm-hmm. I mean? Some silly. Right. You could picture like the way Vince would have done that, even though it was Greg. Yeah. But. Just and Vern, you know, I mean, was he you know, turning they, it into that world a little? A little bit, but they got me using the bear hug. You know, it wasn't cool. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like old school, like you know, nothing against the Crusher. And they want me to talk like the Crusher, you know, bar rag, bar bait, all that. So, you know, I mean, I tried to give it a wing, but you know, I wasn't ready for. Their, I mean, my mic skills never really got really good because I did wrestle in Japan for so long, and they didn't really, you know, you didn't use them. Mm. But yeah, it was tough, you know. So, anyways, they come in. And they says, "Yeah, I want to call you Flapjack Norton." I says, "I ain't doing it." So that night, it was in it was in uh, Mankato. We're doing TV, and that gal's 
announcer, and all of a sudden they go, you kind John and Flap Jack Norton. And I said, them son of a bitches. I was ready to kill Greg. Right. We went down there, and we wrestled a Texas hangman, and we just <laughs> destroyed him. It was terrible. <laughs> you know, John, he's crazy anyways, but, I mean, we – I came back to the locker room. Greg goes, I didn't know he was going to do it. I said, oh, you lying son of a bitch. So they, those poor guys, Bull Payne, and, uh, yeah, they, and they, they took one because you, oh, they got they, your name. Well, no, I just we were like that anyways. Johnny was absolutely off the chain. I mean, and you know, I'm following John's lead, you know, because he's been in the business longer than I've been. And yeah, we were a nightmare, <laughs> absolute nightmare. When did you? So they gave you Flapjack Norton. Like when did when did you see yourself as the wrestler you thought you saw yourself like? Well, I felt a lot better after what happened is I'm doing the Flapjack Norton deal. Yeah. Flair, who knows Hawk, Hawk's always talking. Flair asked Hawk if I was interested in bodyguard, being a bodyguard from WCW. They offered me a deal and everything. And I said, I went to Vern. I said, Vern, man, you got to let me out of this piddly ass deal. Let me go there, man, because they're willing to pay me. As a wrestler or a legit a, bodyguard? A, a, a bodyguard on TV. Character. Character. Okay. So anyways, uh, I said, you know, that's a pretty good, you know, I mean, it was way better than I ever thought I'd be getting at that point in time, you know. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't do it. And I was kind of disgruntled. Then AWA started disbanding. As soon as it was taken off the table that I couldn't do it, he let me go. Vern did. Yeah. I, I said, that was pretty shitty. So anyways. So John, wait, wait, so he waited for he that waited deal to go deal, away. Go away. They filled it with somebody else. I can't remember who they put. They all of a sudden. Okay, go ahead. I, I said, man, that's that's a, yeah. He was a, I didn't get a lot of burn. Okay. So, anyways, then I went to Johnny Nord. Got me a shot out in Portland with Don Owens crew. The dying days of Portland. Well, I didn't think they were dying because I thought they were awesome. Okay, it was awesome. Was I mean it was that was the last real territory, right? Yeah that that was it was awesome. We did. I thought we did. You know, I didn't know it was towards the end, but. I thought it was awesome. Well, nobody there. would have known, right? Like right. you don't yeah, know until I mean, it happens. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, where there's nights we're working against 15 people out there. Oh, but and, but what was so great about it as opposed to the AWA? Well, they called me Crushing Norton, and that would be a a sledgehammer wielding, you know, cigar smoking. Had uh, and you were the character you envisioned yourself well, to be. But but you know, more of a hardcore guy, you know, big strong dude, and I wasn't it wasn't the cartoony deal, you mm. know. So I did that. I did Crushing Norton there for about nine, ten months. It went very well, as far as I, you know, I thought it did. Who was uh, who was who was up there? Don Owens or uh, uh, who's on top? I guess uh, the Grappler. Uh, good night, uh, Scotty the Body. Right. Yeah. Uh, they. Uh, Steve Dahl, Ricky Santana. Was Buddy Rose around? A little bit. Yeah. That, not for you. Not for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Uh, Good night. Uh, Billy Jack Haynes, the first guy I wrestled. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought was awesome. We went in there, sold that old bowling alley arena out. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I really did. Don Owens, the best guy ever, one of the absolute best guys ever. Yeah, you're not the only one to say that. Too. I love that guy, yeah. man. He was a absolute pleasure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I got to, that was cool. That was a good place to be. I wrestled every night, and I, I mean, you. If you got a night off, you didn't even know what to do with yourself. Hmm. But you're home every night. Short trips. We used to go one long trip a month, which is brutal because it was on a Sunday. You know, you did live TV Saturday night, Sunday night morning. You ain't feeling like doing no right. 13 hour drive or whatever. You were okay moving across the country too. Oh yeah, that was no problem. No. That that never bothered me to travel as far as uh, uprooting. You know, I was kind of excited about that part of it, but uh, yeah, I I really. Really had a great shot there. So I, I got on TV there, mm-hmm. learned how to work in front of the camera, you know, well, the best I could. <laughs> enough. You know, enough, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, they gave me the call. Who's they? Japan. Japan. Right. And uh, brought me in for a tour. And uh, Well, what's, what's like the official... I mean, what do you mean they get? They don't just give you a call? Like, were they watching you? Were you sending in tapes? Were you uh, sending television? Was there somebody scouting you? Bill Danhauer. Sent the cr- the grappler uh, the equalizer sent the tape of Russell and me for him to try. He's to get trying him. to get it, of course. <laughs> and they saw the tape of me and him just killing each other, and they go, "Oh, Scott's ready now." Yeah, and I felt terrible. Uh. <laughs> 
So they called me. But and, had he not but done they that, knew, but oh no, I was in contact with Brad, and you know Brad was ready to. It probably took another year with Brad. Mm -hmm. He gonna make sure because I'm his, you know, his guy. Mm -hmm. But they gave me a call, and uh, yeah, it was great. Cool. I mean, my first match over there. I don't know if you ever heard about it. Oh no, it was absolutely amazing. Go on. Me, bad news. And Brad Reagans against Ricky Trosh, who was a champion, Kinsuke Sasaki, and uh, good night. How can I forget? Oh, God dang it. The Tenzan? No, not Tenzan for crying out loud. I don't know. I'm just saying guys. Not Nagata. <laughs> son of a. One of the best wrestlers all time. He's a, he's a freaking. Muda. No. But anyways, it's the, the tag champs. Man, I'll tell you what. The tag champs of Ricky Trosu. So anyways, I started the match. And I'm in the locker room. And Masa and Brad Reagan got me, they pulled me back in the shower. And they said, when you close somebody, close line somebody, you take their effing head off. You slam somebody, power slam, you kill them. <laughs> no, I mean, they're, and they're coming at me for like four hours. I'm just like, hold Hase. My God, I'm uh, sorry, Hase. You got gotcha. you. <laughs> Unbelievable wrestler, too. Who, who are the... Um who who were the like the legend heavyweights? Was it like Hanson or any of those guys around? No, uh, Steve Williams just was. I came in, he was just leaving. Okay. Then Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader. Okay, okay, they were there. So, anyways, I come in and it's me, Bad News, Brad against the the, the tag champ and and Choshu was. You heard the Goldberg chants, you know Goldberg, Goldberg. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in the, in the ring. And here comes Troshu, and this place went absolutely bonkers. Hmm. And I, you know, I've been wrestling 50, 75, 100 people. Right. In a bowling alley. <laughs> 750 tops, and all of a sudden you're in a 15, 18,000 seat arena, and all of a sudden it's just, man, it's pretty intimidating. You know, I, I, I thought I did all right as far as keeping myself cool, but I'm sitting, remember what they're telling me. Man, we want to, I mean, you. Go out there and don't let them think you're a pussy. Right. Man, take these guys out. So anyways, I start the match with, with Kinski. Knock him out cold. <laughs> Swear to God. I mean, he had a short clothesline, boom, he's gone. Hasi, we had, you know, he come flying over top ropes. But his boots touched the ground, and I just pounded him. <laughs> he's gone. Chosh was looking at me like... <laughs> He didn't want to. He didn't even want nothing to do with it. Right. So I, you know, I take off after Trosha. You know, <laughs> I'm just kind of lost in here. So as I got a hold of Ricky and I'm tearing into his ass pretty good, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, I feel this. I get pulled from the back of my hair. I long everybody's wearing the sport in the mullet back then. Yeah. Bad dude's got a hold of me. He pulls it back. He says, "Man, settle down, settle down." He pulls me, to, and he yanks me back, and he tells me. You just gotta settle down, man. You got these guys that you know, match only one minute into it and they're all <laughs> yeah, 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 scared oh, yeah. of you. So, anyways, I mean it was just you, I freaked out and But that could go one or two ways. I mean, that could right? I mean, obviously it went one way. But so I'm in the match and you know, no, I got bad news yanking me over. Brad's going nuts. <laughs> two guys. And that's why Brad out. wanted you to wait a year, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Choshu's the world champ. Yeah. You know, he I mean, I beat the daylights out of him. I'm going back to the locker room. I'm going, they're going to send me home. I'm done. I walked to the locker room. All the Japanese boys are clapping. Great, great debut, Scott. Great debut. And, and I'm going, holy shit. I thought it was horrible. Right. <laughs> but they loved they, it. Well, because they hated all the Japanese guys <coughs> hated Choshu, and they loved that you beat the shit out of them. <laughs> they like something. Man. Right. I, mean, I never, you know, I, I don't know if they... They didn't like Ricky. I think that they, he was pretty hard on him. Mm. I mean, but he got the most out of that office, brother. He was, I liked working for Ricky. I really did. Well, that's it. Him and Moss were the absolute best. It's hard to be a, a, a top guy and not like have the, uh, have the under class kind of be griping at you, right? Yeah. I mean, and Ricky, you know, you, you're talking to Noki, Fujinami, Ricky, basically, you know, that breakdown. You got Gooch in there too, but you know Ricky had the power. He didn't mind using it. I mean, he was very uh, self-promoting. I mean, you know, I don't know if you ever saw his retirement match. <laughs> Ten guys are still in the business. He beat them all in about four minutes. <laughs> I mean, and then didn't retire. Right. For use. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know, 
But no, Ricky, I thought was awesome. Cool. Those guys were awesome. And you tagged with Hercules? Loved it. He's the one that, man, he, he, he actually did help me so much. That's, that's a, a, that was a, that is one of the, the absolute best wrestlers I've ever shared the ring with. He could do it all. And I mean, he, the deal with that was it was supposed to be me and Bill Kazmaier. Which makes and sense. And I told to me. Bill, yeah, yeah, you know, we're both sporting, had the mullets and the beard. We look, you know, Bill was a big badass, big badass. Mm-hmm. I was too. And, you know, they wanted Bill and me to tag together, but they wanted me to be the, the guy they're pushing. And Bill, he was such a good man. Bill Kazmaier is the coolest guy in the world. And he, you know, he told me, he says, Scott, he says, you know, I'm, I don't feel that I should have to be, I feel that I should be the guy that they're, you know, and I understood him, you know, and he says, I'm not going to do this. I said, that's fine, Bill. I, you know, man, that would have been great. You know, I mean, it would have been cool as hell to be able to do drastic powers of Bill Kazmaier because I respected it. He's a, you know, the world's strongest man, dude. I mean, it was just been cool as hell. Then Ray came in and Ray understood what was going on. Who was Hercules? Yep. Yeah, and he helped me so much in this business. And I mean, we had we went to a different level. As to, I, I mean, very rarely do you have a tag tag matches main event. Two American teams got years like we did with the Steiners, mm-hmm. and blow the place out, sell it out. We did that so many times. It just you know it's usually you know the Japanese America, Japanese America. They wouldn't do it, but this that would. And I mean, we had some. Un- it was just awesome. And it's obviously not like talking. You're not talking them into the seats. No, man, right? they were there. Yeah. I remember one time we had a, sh- a match in Osaka. Masa come in the locker room and he was pissed off at me. I said, "What's the matter?" He says, "Last time we hear it sold out. Only ninety eight percent sold out." I go, "Well, what?" The-? And it was a holiday. Yeah, I yeah. says, "Well, he says everybody home praying or some dumb shit." <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the Steiners and us again. You know, and it yeah. was just. I mean. We- that was awesome. I mean, the only bad thing about it was is the Steiners had a contract where they only had to come in 12 times a year. Single, one match. Right. Me and Ray were out there doing the legwork, three, mm-hmm. four-week tours, and you got fresh Scott Steiner, fresh Rick Steiner, and we are just pounded. <laughs> and they're sitting in there, and this is when they're handing freaker flyer miles out like – I mean, it was brutal. What are your thoughts on that? Like, because I mean, that happens nowadays. You know, you look at WrestleMania oh, and these guys yeah, coming but I, in. You know, the thing about it is, you always what you agree to is what you agree mm-hmm. to. So, that, I mean, you weren't bitter against no. the Steiners. If I was to get no, absolutely not. We used to mess with them all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, if you can mess with them, I mean, no, heck, they they earned their spot. Right, right, fair hey, enough. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people. Man, there's, when you talk about something like that, man, you go back to WCW days, I mean, we'd see guys come in and say, hey, man, you, they signed you on the contract, huh? I've been here for seven years. Yeah. <laughs> you never seen them. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I mean, that'll piss you off. Sure. Was that place just a... Uh, WCW? Uh, just... You see, going from Japan to WCW is like going from the most organized company to just a like mad... Ca- I mean... Is it just a mess? There'd be 85 guys in the locker room, nigga... Arn Anderson come open the door. Everybody get dressed. I don't know the goddamn matches. <laughs> right. So I mean, we were, was it easy? I guess it'd just be like, was there a gr- like a separate g- a group of guys who would just take advantage of the system and some people who like had good morals and like you know like knew you could but just didn't. Oh God, are you kidding? <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, I mean, just check. I mean, come on. But there's, I, I guess, I'm more interested in the people that like didn't just that were like, I know I could just take advantage of all of this, but I won't. I don't know. Yeah, there's plenty of that. I mean, golly, Eric Bischoff. I remember, okay, me and Rick Rue got invited to this golf tournament for a charity event. Rick Rick was always invited to WWE. And he says, Scott, it's here in Atlanta. I want you to come golf with me. I said, sure, man, that'd be awesome. On Monday Night Show, a month before, I I, I didn't like going to anybody else. I just went to Eric. So I go to Eric. I says, hey, Eric, I, I need to talk to you. He looks at me and says, you too, you son of a bitch. I go, what? He just started cussing me. He says, man, you want more money? What's the matter with you guys? I can't keep you effing happy. I says, Eric, I just want to get out for the golf tournament. <laughs> Every night they were just hammering this guy. Right. I mean, just, <laughs> and he was giving it. And he was just, you know, just handing it out. And mm-hmm. I mean, 
so yeah, there's some. They took advantage of this cat. Now, I mean, not they take advantage of it, right? You know, but they drove him absolutely crazy. Now, listen, you don't. This is a story I've heard. You don't have to tell it on here, but I'd like to hear. Like, tell me. Did you did did you get a raise from him somehow? From yeah, Eric. Oh hell yeah! I, they, Dragon told me a story that you told once that I thought was the greatest thing of all time. Well, I was going to go with Goldberg. Have a good match with Bill. Mm. And uh, they told me, you know, 10, 12 minutes. I said, ah, that's awesome. It would be good, you know, I can roll with that. We'd have a good match. Well, they started getting ready for the match, and we're talking, you know, and I get called in the office, and uh, good night, Mouth of the South. Jimmy, Jimmy, Hart. Jimmy Hart comes in, Scott, they need to talk to you, need to talk to you. I said, what's going on? So they bring me back in the office and says, man, you're not going to hurt Bill, are you? I says, hurt Bill? I says, he's killing everybody. Right. Why would I hurt Bill? I says, no, I ain't going to hurt Bill. So anyways, uh, we're going over to, you know, and they're all worried about me hurting Bill, and I just kind of pissed off about it, you know. Well, then I was kind of put in my place, like a guy at my level would possibly hurt Bill. Now I'm mad. I mean, he basically just said, like, you know, he put, you know, he could have, he couldn't, he, he Kind of big slap in the face. Mm. Paul Orndorff standing behind me. He's got his hands on my shoulders. He's got Zilla on, big boy. So I said, man, I'm ready to kill this son bitch. So anyways, Orndorff yanked me out of there. Got me out of, you know, I was pissed. And Eric knew I was pissed. So anyways, I was supposed to have 11, 12 minutes of Bill. We're lining up to go out to, the, the, you know, my music playing. Terry Taylor says, we got 70 seconds. <laughs> I grabbed that thing. I said, whoever effing did this, man, when I get back, I'm killing your ass. So here comes Bill. His, his freaking entrance is more than 70 right, seconds. Right, right. <laughs> we went through. We, we, he, yeah, this, Bill was cool as hell. We're going the whole distance, you know. I was good. So we wrestled this whole match out. We just tore it. We had a good match. Yeah. Did, you know, Bill was awesome. I thought Bill was great. I come walking out, uh, going back between the curtains there. Here's Eric going to shake my hand. Great match. Man, I yanked his ass up. I said, we need to talk. I was ready to kill him. He I said, mean, I was so freaking mad. He goes, you want to go to a golf tournament? No. That, <laughs> <laughs> basically. So, I mean, I mean, I was pissed. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, big slap in the face, what he said there. You And he first told me that I misunderstood my side. I think I did. A couple wrestlers come walking by trying to intervene. I was, it was getting, I was pretty hot, you know. So anyways, uh, I ain't going to say who they are, but big name guys. I told them, like, you know, mind your own business. I'm, I got this, you know. Because, I mean, it was it was something that he didn't need to do. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I went home, told my wife what happened. I flew back a private jet with him <laughs> that night, you know. So, so I mean, and, you know, he was. Just mean mugging him the whole time or what? Nah. <laughs> I just because you, you you sit there and you go through this crap and you see it you know they could promise you something one day, next day there's did I talk to you last week right you know what I mean it just yeah that must have been so frustrating it piss you off yeah. so anyways uh I got home and I said man I might be getting fired to my wife she goes why what happened I told her what happened and she says and she got mad at me for not drilling Eric <laughs> you should have killed that so bit I said well, you know I want my job I didn't want to you know not. Take us, you know, Eric's a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what pissed me off more than anything. Me and Eric were cool. So next morning, Janie, I'm in the shower. I just got back from the gym. My wife says, uh, Janie's on the phone. I figure I'm getting fired. That's the office girl? Yeah. yeah. She, Janie took care of everything with WCW. So he's, uh, she says, Eric wants in the office as soon as he can get here. And I says, well, hell, man. How long is it going to be? I said, take me an hour. I come walk in the office. I'm figuring I'm done. He's, come on, let's go. He took me to a Mexican restaurant. We drank about 20 margaritas. Yeah. Got a nice bump in pain six weeks or three months off. Right. And you can go to Japan, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, hell, if I'd have known that, I'd have been kicking it. I had you by the throat yeah. six months ago. <laughs> and I was just scaring the shit out of him, huh? Well, I was, it just, I was, I guess it hurt me more as a friend. And then for him to, he, he, you shouldn't put people in the categories, people. You know what I mean? Because, you know, my my deal wasn't here. It was there. Say it meaning what? My deal in Japan, you know. I you. And I mean, you know, I don't go by that, but he does. 
names and you know and I, I, I didn't like that that's one thing I don't agree with them on explain that a little more would you? like, like you, you're saying you were a big big star no, in Japan I'm saying yeah I'm saying oh yeah and but I just felt like you know you don't treat people like that you don't categorize people like he does you know the bigger the name the better he treats you he treats you right and that's bullshit gotcha you know that that don't work for me. Of course. And, you know, and I mean, and you know, he he'll tell you, it's, Eric. I mean, he don't hide nothing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right out there. I mean. Sure. Yeah. So, but you know, that pissed me off. You know, and that's the only thing about that whole deal. You know, I mean, he got close, man. I mean, to taking over the world. No, to getting his ass hit. Oh, to getting everything. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Both. I maybe. was just pissed. Right. You know what right. I mean, but you know, you don't have to get there. You sure. know, the thing about it is, Bill. Bill was a guy who hurt everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was killing guys. You know, and I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sure I had a few guys complaining, whining. You know, it was a whole different territory. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I don't know. I just he handled it pretty. That wasn't cool. It really was, and I mean, and the thing about it is, I haven't thought about it since it happened. Right. You know, I, you know, I mean, Stinkum, what happened between you and Bischoff? What do you mean? He wasn't there. You know, what I mean, Luger Code, what happened between you and Bischoff, man? What happened? Tell me. You know, they're all everywhere. Why did you kill him? What? Right. I just kinda, he's my friend too. You know, <laughs> I mean, plus he did. He, Eric was absolutely awesome to me in this business. He took care of me so well; it's unbelievable. Mm. I mean. People got something to complain about how he, we, brother, he was paying the guys. Right. I mean, it was just an awesome time to be in the business. So, I mean, you know, that pissed me off what he did. But still, if you think about what he was doing for you, mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty good too. That's it. Sounds good. All right, I really want to thank Gilbert at Clutch City kind of for putting this all together. Scott Norton, a bucket list guy, somebody I've wanted to have on the show, somebody that uh, I've talked to a little bit via social media and somebody who's just always came across as a positive, fun, good person for the community, good person for wrestling, represents us well, and just a huge, huge dude. Very cool to be here in Japan, have Scott Norton on the show, and then continuing on my Japanese progress chris is gone right now he's back in the other room but we will continue our success here in japan and we'll talk to you more uh, next week scott norton amazing thanks for coming on before we get out of here let's get into some plugs and upcoming events all right the best way that you can support coltmerch.com and digitalcult.com i got a twitter and an instagram at colt cabana facebook slash aow podcast and colt cabana i got a very public email colt wrestling at gmail.com maybe your promoter want to put me on your upcoming show or convention cut my promo.com is where i have somebody else cut a promo for me because i'm too lazy it's on youtube coltcabana.com is my website i got a p.o box Send me something when I come back to America. I'll pick it up, and I will have a smile on my face. Upcoming so far, April 19th through May 4th, I am in Japan for Pro Wrestling Noah. A lot of gaijin have been coming over. One guy told me to mention him while I was at Sizzler at the Tokyo Dome. He wasn't eating with me, but he said mention me. I said I'd probably forget. Now I'm remembering. I don't remember your name. I think you're from Manchester. But in saying that, a lot of foreigners, a lot of Americans, a lot of Australians, a lot of people are coming and saying, hey, I came to Noah because I heard about the show, heard you on the podcast. I'm here. You're here. This works out well. Come watch us at Pro Wrestling Noah. Saturday, May 9th, Summit, Illinois, resistancepro.com. Saturday, May 23rd, and Saturday, June 6th, Rahway, New Jersey, Pro Wrestling Syndicate.com. Sunday, May 24th, Kenosha, Wisconsin, at the Broad Stop, SSWOnline.com. Friday, June 12th, Munich, Germany, WXW Wrestling.com. Sunday, June 14th, London, England, Revolution Pro Wrestling.com. And all of August, I will be at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Tickets are at the stand.co.uk. Plus, live podcasts every Sunday. That's it, guys. That is the show for this week. Huge thanks to Gilbert from Clutch City. Huge thanks to Scott Norton for coming on the show. Huge thanks to you at home for listening while I'm in Japan and you're somewhere else. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone, Kid Russell and Matt Jenkins on the music, Dane Miller with some tech. Let's thank our sponsors, HighSpots.com. Hundreds of full-length titles available to download, plus all the $5 wrestling titles, AMA knee pads, gear, a 
wrestling ring masks freight train documentary they got it thanks to onehourtees.com they help run pro wrestling tees.com the place where you can directly support your favorite independent wrestler directly the money goes to them in their pockets helps them live and tweakedaudio.com slash cult the earbuds that i use get over 30 percent off and free shipping just because you listen to this show that's it i'm in this small box i'm uh we're gonna we're gonna close off this week hey you know what i uh I backed the Kickstarter. I, I want to mention that. Dog Legs. I've heard of this for years from Madman Pondo. We might have even talked about it in the Pondo podcast four years ago. This dude Heath has been in the has been documenting it. I didn't even know. It just popped up and then I was like, fuck. I'll throw some money towards that. It's a Japanese wrestling promotion with handicapped people wrestling in it. That's what I do while I'm here in Japan. I've done that for years now. Like, I'll just get so bored sitting in this hotel room that I'll just spend money. Like, because you come home from these tours and they just give you this hunk of cash. And you're like, what should I do? All of this can't go towards bills and stuff. I should just randomly spend it. Bought a massage chair once. I'll buy some random over-the-top stuff, which that fits in with Scott Norton. Now, uh, Now I'm backing dog legs. That sounds about right. All right, I got to go find more stuff on the internet. I've been watching a lot of weird stuff. Will Forte, Last Man on Earth, watch that. Pretty good. All right, I'm not going to sit here and tell you everything I'm watching. Bye. (laughs) This has been The Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. This is this is the first thing I've done in a while. Well, I appreciate you doing it. No, I loved it. Awesome. This is cool. (laughs) I I just hope I did all right. Uh, No, you did great. I mean, it's, it's kind of different sitting here. You know, you, you're really good at this. We're just bullshitting, man. <laughs> no, but I mean, you're, you're, you're really good at this. Uh, I'm, I'm not so good at this. I kept doing this shit yeah. here.